What's up Crusaders? Welcome to another episode of Arcade Crusade. In today's video, we are going to start working on the Williams Whitewater. This will be part one in the Whitewater Restoration Series. And today we are mainly going to focus on tearing down uh, the top side of the play field. Uh, we're going to start with taking the ramps in the upper play field off and uh, we'll pretty much go from there. But I already and I showed it in the last video, but I already put cabinet protectors uh, right there, um, new legs, new bolts, levelers. I put new yellow buttons on because I didn't like the look of the red, new shooter rod. So we've already done all that. That's, that's our basic stuff. Um, aside from that, I have not done anything to this game. Just to prep for it, I went ahead and I labeled every single connector on this game. So in this back left corner of the play field, we have the flasher for the left side of the back mountain, which are these two red and black wires here. Uh, it's red and black coming out of the, the top there, and they hook up to this right here. Uh, I went ahead and I labeled every single connector that connects to the ramps in the upper play field. So I started on the left side and I labeled this A, and then this, this, this uh, three one here, uh, I labeled this one B. This is the switch for the Insanity Falls ramp. This is the drop ramp switch C. Um, then I went over to what goes to the um, left side of the upper play field. Or actually, no, I went, I went under here. Um, these are the same things that we were just looking at. So we have um, the right side flasher, these black and red wires here, the right side of the boulder flasher. I labeled that D, and we got another switch for a ramp up there. Uh, anytime you see white and green, it's always going to a ramp. Anytime you see red and black, it's always going to a flasher uh, on the uh, normally. But so I labeled that E. Then I went up to uh, the two wires that run through this this hole in the main play field uh, that runs to. We got our lights, our controlled lights that go above the dual switch gate. So that's G. That, that's the dual switch gate where it either goes to Insanity Falls or Waterfall. And then F, um, that is for the actual switches themselves. So we got two white and two green wires. Those are for the switches. These are for the yellow and red lamps up there. Um, so that's the dual switch gate that, that releases that. Um, H, we removed this wire right here. From this, and this just runs up to the um, the Yeti, um, the Yeti ball diverter. It's on a solenoid up there, and what it does is it, it kicks out. So that's just the solenoid connector there. Purple wires are usually for your solenoids, so H, removed that. Um, let me see where I did I at. I gotta remember where I disconnected I. Trying to think what was with that. Oh, here we go. Okay, so there's two wires right here. These two, actually, you can see right here where they run to. Um, this flasher right here, and this switch on the um, on the Bigfoot ramp. These are the Bigfoot ramp lights. Um, it's Bigfoot's cave right there. You got one flasher and one switch there for Bigfoot's cave. And those are at the top right of the hole in your main play field here. So uh, J is for the switch. And then I right here that I labeled is for the flasher. So another switch and flasher we had to disconnect there. Um, then we got K right here, um, both sides of it. So there's K, K. Where K runs is all of our um, controlled insert bulbs. So these are all the insert bulbs. So we removed K. Um, L down here. This runs to the motor for the Yeti. So what makes this head turn? Uh, that those two right there. That runs to that. M. This is our GI circuit, um, and you can actually see it goes to the GI bulb right there. Uh, M is our GI circuit on the upper play field. Um, where is N? Here is N. Um, N runs to our, here we go, 
Uh, N runs to our flipper on the upper play field. N is for the end of stroke switch. It is a orange and black wire, uh, runs to the end of sto stroke switch on the upper flipper. And then O, uh, O is for our power to the coil on the upper flipper. Um, so N and O both go to the upper flipper. And then P, P is the last one. Um, it's just one more connector. I'm not, I'm actually, this is the only one I'm not sure what this runs to up on the upper play field. Um, it looks like an opto connector. So there might be an opto on the um, vertical up kicker that runs to the top where the wire form is at. This might be the opto for that, but th this is P. It runs right by this ball popper here. This is the one that has the least amount of length. Um, so I tagged about, and in both of them, I labeled everything on both sides, and I, I just got done disconnecting all of them, so we are completely ready to take everything off. Um, but this is about 15 connectors you gotta disconnect. Oh, and the one I forgot, uh, this goes right onto the bottom of the Bigfoot board right here. It connects, if I move that wire, connects right there. Um, and what I did is I marked the side with a line, and then I marked the circuit board with some Sharpie right there to know what goes where. And I took pictures of all this stuff, guys. So about 15 connectors you gotta disconnect. Um, three coming out of this bottom left hole. Two coming out of this bottom middle hole. Uh, we got two coming out of this left side play field hole. And then the rest of them all come out of this big hole right here. Um, but that should help you guys keep track of what is going on under here. This is the easiest way. Just label your connectors and disconnect everything. Don't leave switches hanging that were on your ramps and, and things like that. Just label all your connectors, take a bunch of pictures, disconnect them. So uh, that is every single, hopefully every single one. Hopefully we didn't miss any, but it should be every single one. If we missed one, we'll just iterate past P. Um, so we'll just keep going from P if we need to label more connectors. But I think that should be all of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay the play field down. Um, on page, I want to say it's like page 139 or something like that in the, um, I'll pull this back. Page 139 in the Whitewater Manual has a, and I got to print it out along with some other instructions and I'll show you guys. Um, this right here is in the Whitewater Manual and it's a guide to removing the mini play field. Um, so I'm pretty much just going to follow what Williams tells me to do. These were another two posts I found on pin side of people telling you the order they took it off in. So I'm just going to follow this and walk you guys through it. Um, but everyone says the first spot. Oh, and then the other thing I was going to say is I have a ton of Ziplocs and my Sharpie ready so that when I take screws off, I label where they came from, put them in a Ziploc, right, um, you know, right on the Ziploc, put them in the Ziploc, and then I know where they came from, and I don't have to worry too much about what went where and everything like that. So um, first thing you want to do on all these guides that tell you is there is two screws on these back mountains. And if you recall, there is a red and black wire on the left side of the play field here, red and black wire on the middle of the play field here that connects both these flashers. So when you have those, if you just want to remove this boulder, you only need those two um, disconnected. So if it helps you to go a couple connectors at a time so you can know what you're doing, um, it's a lot easier to do that. Now, I have a little Ziploc. I always keep my Ziplocs when I order pinball parts because they give you all, I mean, they give you a ton of different sizes. Um, so I got a little Ziploc from Pinball Life that I think an E-clip came in and I just wrote back boulders on there. So I know these two screws came from my back boulders. Easy enough. So now, oh, all right. So that just comes off without even needing to disconnect the flashers. But the flashers do need to be disconnected from the upper play field here. Um, so that just comes off with two screws. These are just domes that go over those flashers right here and right here. Um, but we do need to disconnect those anyway. So ignore what I said, but that takes off the back boulders. So easy enough, back boulders are out. Um, and now everyone suggests uh, you start taking out the Insanity Falls ramp. So you can just go screw by screw 
taken out the Insanity Falls ramp, and all I'm going to do is just take a bunch of pictures along the way of how this thing actually mounts. And what I'm going to do is with the, with the ramps, I like to put the screws back into the posts from which they came. So I'm just taking a bunch of pictures here to know how all of this mounts. And this will just help me, it'll, it'll make my life a lot easier later when I have to do this stuff. All right, so we can start removing everything that's necessary for the Insanity Falls ramp. So we got one screw in the back here. I'm just gonna place that up here for now. Okay, so that's removed. We got one at the bottom of this dip here. And I'm gonna see if all these screws are the same. If all these screws are the same, they can fully be taken out. We don't need to worry about it. This one actually might be a little bit longer. No, it looks to be the exact same. We can actually try the threads there, but those, those two look to be the exact same. So not a big deal there. We got one at the next hump in the waterfall and again these screws look to all be the same so far so I'm just putting them up here and we will get a ziplock and label them and again take a bunch of pictures as you go guys it's just way easier if you take pictures because um, you take pictures you label these look at your pictures you'll know what went where all these screws are the exact same so far um, now we just got the one down by the ball guide here. I don't know if this one's special, if it's really long. It might be really long. Yeah. So this one might stay with the ball guide here. Yep. Super long screw with the ball guide and a spacer that goes um, spacer that goes with it. So I might have to order a new one of these because this one is pretty chewed up and I got to see if I can find these on uh, Pinball Life or Marcos. I'm sure somebody has these. I just got to get a measurement on it. Uh, so that should be all the screws necessary to remove the Insanity Falls ramp except the two flap screws. But in order to remove those, we got to take the dual ball gate off from the ramps. So, uh, yeah, let me use this one. And I'm just gonna write on another small Ziploc that these all go to Insanity Falls. And then I will get another Ziploc for dual ball gate. All right, so all of these can go in my Insanity Falls Ziploc. And then this, um, I'll put the flap ones in there as well once we get to the flap, but that is that. And uh, yeah, so we'll need to get the um, the flasher should be able to pull out with the Insanity Falls ramp. There's no reason it shouldn't. Um, yeah, I don't think we'll be able to sneak in here. We'll have to remove this gate here. So dual ball gate. Okay, that is removed. And now we go to this side. And like I said, the wiring on the ball gate is actually separate from the wiring for the lamps. So I'm just gonna put these in our dual ball gate bag. Okay. 
Okay, so that is off. Um, now we're just in a spot. We can actually move this sign and move the ball gate and we can get, let me switch to a smaller bit on my screwdriver here. Just a number one Phillips instead of a number two. And I got a magnetic screwdriver here. So that can pull out. And when you take these screws out, these are screwing straight into the wood on the play field. So make sure you take them out. Don't put a ton of pressure on them. And uh, try to just take them out as straight as you possibly can. And that is the other flat. So this can go in the Insanity Fall Ziploc that I started. And these screws are clearly different because, I mean, these are wood screws instead of machine screws. So you can tell these screws are clearly different and they go to the flat. Um, so now we should be in a spot where we can just sneak this entire ramp out of the game. And all we have to do is get our connectors out from under the play field. And it might take a little bit of might take a little bit of moving. I'm just gonna put this in the cabinet. Right, so there's one of them. One pulled from the corner. And luckily they designed the um, drop ramp here to have a cutout. You can pull both of these out, but I mean, there it is. That is our entire Insanity Falls ramp out. You know, four screws. We disconnected A and B underneath the play field. Um, and it just makes your life so much easier to disconnect those under the play field and just know where they went. Yeah, you got to feed them back through when you put everything back together. It's way easier to do it this way. So Insanity Falls ramp is out. This thing is huge. That's, that's unreal how big that thing is. All right, so Insanity Falls ramp completely out. Um... Let's see what we have next. So now you can kind of see how like all intertangled all these ramps are and how, you know, these these two all link together and they, they all go over each other. So I'm just going to look at my guide here and see what they say to remove next. All right, so we got the dual switch gate assembly removed. And this can actually probably get pulled completely out and I'm just going to take pictures again we'll just turn this back a little bit just so we get a nice picture of how this is supposed to look but And you can see the wires run just directly through here under the play field. So we should be able to, um, we might have to wait actually. Yeah, because I think they go all into one. So you might have to wait and just leave that hanging there for now. So we can actually, um, we should be able to, at this point, remove the shooter ramp. Uh, yeah, it's called the shooter ramp right here. It's where your plunger shoots the ball. Um, this is just a few screws, so I'm gonna start a bag for that. And again, just take some pictures, grab my screwdriver, and we will remove this as well. Um, and Bigfoot's cave is attached to the shooter ramp. So, um, yeah. So I'm just going to remove these two screws from Bigfoot's cave. Because this is zip tied to the shooter ramp and I'm going to leave it zip tied to the shooter ramp. 
So we got two screws on Bigfoot's cave. So now that is completely free. And uh, we got a screw up here on the upper play field and a second screw on the upper play field right behind it. All right, so both of those are out. And now we got one down below. All right, and now our entire shooter ramp can be removed from the game. That's completely out, you know, only five screws and two of them are for Bigfoot's cave. So also not difficult at all. Just be careful with how you lean it because Bigfoot's cave is pretty fragile, so. I'm just putting these screws into a Ziploc. Yep, so there we go. We got a Ziploc with shooter ramp written on it. And that will go to the side. Um, easy enough. Shooter ramp is out. All right, so now uh, everyone is saying you got to remove these two screws here. Um, it's securing, it's called the lower to upper ramp, and this is the upper to lower ramp. But this left one here, the multi millions ramp, the spine chiller, um, the spine chiller has to be removed next. So let me make sure that's what they say on this one, too. Yeah, so we can remove the two screws on the spine chiller. And I'm gonna put these in a small Ziploc labeled spine chiller. All right, spine chiller, that's removed there. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, we could remove this, this one, this one here is pretty much free. Um, I think there actually may be one connector that I missed um, that connects the spine chiller. So you might have to lift up the play field again and get the spine chiller switch connector. Um, I may have missed the one for the spine chiller. Yeah, so... Let me lift that and we'll label that because the spine chiller will have to come off. That'll come off in a second, but we need to find that. That's on the left side, middle hole. Yep, it's this, this connector right here. Um, so this will be Q because we missed this one.
Okay, so that is Q. I'm gonna take a picture of how that is running through the play field there. Okay, and we got our picture. So now we can disconnect that and see if we can get this out. Well, that's not fun. I don't know why that wire is run through that. There we go. And while we're under here, I'm just gonna make sure that we none of this gets hung up on anything when we when we lift the play field. And I just wanna move all of this so it's not hanging on anything. Yeah. Alright, so Nothing really looks like it'll be stuck here. Um, yeah, we got J actually. Both H and um, yeah, H and J will need to be pulled out of this. That's easy enough. There we go. That's one, and that is the other. So now those are loose. Now we can pull this back down. So actually one more 16 connectors on this game um, to get that off. And dual gates falling. Almost at the point here that we could even take this ramp off too. So you got to remove the two screws, and I apologize, guys. I this is my first time doing this, so I tried to be as prepared as I could for this. So these two screws got to get removed. still kind of attached to the ball guide here. And it may even be just be easier to remove it entirely by taking this off. And we'll, we'll just start a little Ziploc for it. And if we remove it entirely, it'll make our lives a lot easier. Looking at these. Yeah, we can just hold that nut in place. stuck to the plastic a little bit so that's now off those actually may have been the right screws I ordered the right ones so if they aren't we'll know make sure those go in the right bag or upper to lower ramp bag. All right, so now we should be free to get in here and get all four of these nuts off. And I'm gonna go grab, well actually I don't need to, I got my kit here so I can get a nut driver out. Just gotta figure out what size we're dealing with here.
that is the fourth nut removed from the upper play field. And now they're saying you should be able to just remove this entire thing. Um, once you get it off the nuts, I'm sure we're gonna have like a bunch of shit to pull out. Right, so we're just stuck on that. Um, well, there it is. That is the entire play field pulled out. So yeah, all those ramps can just stay on. Uh, you just gotta remove those four nuts. All the ramps can stay on. This whole thing can pull out just as one. So <laughs> there's all, all of our connectors underneath the play field. That is just unbelievable. So that is the entire upper play field pulled out. And now, I mean, now we can just work on the game. We can take out that last ramp and um, Take out the last ramp and I mean, we're ready to just tear the remaining boulders off. There's really no plastics on this game just because it has boulders. Um, I might have to get a new Whirlpool plastic. It looks cracked. But that, that pretty much does it for taking out the upper play field. I'm just going to lean it on its side so I don't put a ton of pressure on the ramp. Um, actually, let's lean this in front of Tron. All right, so to finish this off, I will take the disaster drop off. Um, we'll just take pictures here of what needs to come off. It's just got the one switch, and the other two are just protectors. So we got one there and one back here. And it is only those two, those three things that hold it in. Um, change. Let me cross this off. All right, so I got a bag labeled disaster drop. And we have, I'm tripping over my cord. So take that screw out, put it to the side. And we got the two flat screws. Okay, we'll get those put in our Ziploc, and then, oh, okay, we do have to remove, I guess, does this ball guide, yeah, the ball guide attaches to the play field, so you got to remove another screw here, I didn't notice this one, because I thought the, the guide came with it, so, one more screw right there and uh, now we can sneak this out so there we go disaster drop pull off this is probably the dirtiest ramp on the game everything else wasn't super dirty but this one is filthy um, so there it is I mean all these ramps are in pretty good shape no no nothing's too I mean disaster drops cracked right here but that if we get the mantis target protectors it'll protect that and I don't see a reason I'm hesitant to put new ramps on this game. I, I don't really see a reason that it's gonna need it. So we'll uh, put the screws away for disaster drop. I still gotta put the nuts away. All right, so we got disaster drop put away see it's nice that they all these ramps have names in the game because then that's what you can call them and you don't have to just say back ramp left ramp like I mean they may have thought about that when they were 
building this game. Oh, I guess the last thing we can do, um, let me show you guys how to take an apron off. On white water, the apron, you can't take it off like you can on most games because, well, you can take it off, but uh, you can't take it off easily because um, the Insanity Falls end of the ramp is in the way for you to take this thing off. So to take it off, just a screw right here and one over here. All right, so that is the second screw. It slides forward and pulls out. Playfield has these little pieces here that these, uh, the notches right there, this notch right here locks into, and there's one on this side as well. Uh, but those pieces lock in right there, and it basically just drops down, you slide it in, and that's it. So now we got the apron off as well, and, um, and now we just need to um, take off the boulder gardens and everything else. The only thing that sucks about when you have the apron off is you gotta, you really gotta like lift by the ball trough to get this thing off. Um, but I think I'm gonna stop right there. Um, in the next episode, we can take off the slingshots and um, we can take off boulders and ball guides and the remaining plastics we'll do separate. This was mainly just let's take off the ramps in the upper play field. Um, and then, you know, we can rebuild, the, we can get the flippers off, rebuild the flippers, get the, you know, the boulders, the remaining boulders off and uh, take all that out. But now you can see what whitewater looks like with the upper play field removed. And they actually make it pretty easy to take all that stuff off. So it's, it's ready right now that if we take a few more things off in the next episode, um, take a few more things off in the next episode and then start cleaning. And then we can put all this, they can put this whole thing back together. So it's actually a lot easier than I anticipated. So won't be too bad actually. And uh, I'm waiting on some more parts to come in the mail. I'm waiting on LEDs. Um, I still got to order rubbers. I still got to order a bunch of parts for this thing. I do have the flipper rebuild kits, but that's about it. So we can do flipper rebuild kits. We can clean, take everything apart next episode, but then from there on out, I'll be waiting on parts. I ordered some parts for Whirlwind as well, so we can get working on that. Um, but that about does it for this episode. Um, hopefully, hopefully this will help you guys figure out how to take apart the upper play field on Whitewater because the upper play field on this game, it's like five ramps entangled all on top of each other. And there's really no good guide out there visually how to take this apart. There's some text guides, but it's hard to know what to do where on those text guides. And this gives you a full visual representation of how to take everything off. So uh, I hope this guys, I hope this helps you guys out and uh, we'll pick back up in the restoration next episode. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you soon.